the DGR fam has spoken. I posted yesterday the poll, which uh, winter shoes should I test next? It wasn't even close, everybody. I expected it to be a lot closer. So the Hoka Challenger ATR6 Gore-Tex, which is what is on my feet right now, had 51% of the vote. Unbelievable, thank you for voting. I thought the Nike Peg 37 Shields would at least be much closer. So anyway, you have spoken, I'm listening to you. We're testing in the mud, the snow, and yes, I'm gonna go down to the uh, creek here in a minute. Oh man, thank you for voting. Let's keep going here. I did not fall, but it was close. The temperatures today are perfect for testing out Gore-Tex shoes because it's in the 40s, so all the snow is melting, so it's really wet out and just muddy and nasty out. So it's perfect for testing the shoes, but uh, not necessarily perfect for staying upright. And, uh, oh man, here's a lot of snow. One last thing is the outsole has three to four millimeter lug depth, so definitely not designed for you know, uh, lots and lots of mud in these shoes. Anyway, all right, let's see if I can get out of this snow here. Whoa. All right, time, time for the water test. Remember a couple days ago, the Nike Pegasus 37 Shields? Here's a little flashback. Hopefully you can see that there. I am keeping my heels up because I don't want to quite go all the way in yet. I am, I'm blown away. All right, I was beyond impressed with the Peg 37 Shields, how they did resisting the water. Like my feet did not get wet at all. I'm gonna test those shoes out very, very soon. But now I wanna see how this Gore-Tex does on the uh, Peg 37, sorry, on the Challenger ATR6s. All right, let me just find a spot here. impressed once again okay i am not all the way in yet i'm gonna go a little deeper but i cannot feel any i can't feel any water getting in yet okay this is good and i'm, I'm just starting to get over the tp tpu overlay in the toe box so let's let's go a little deeper here and i'll try and talk so that you can hear uh, so i'll let you know when i can feel the water still cannot feel the water yet 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 now wow Okay, I feel the water, but barely. And I was, I mean, I'm submerged in water here. That's, again, very impressive. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go all the way in and just see how long it takes. This is, I'm, this again, Colorado, we don't really deal with wet weather a ton. So this is just, uh, this is all new to me, okay? Okay, uh, we're gonna call it there. Good test, unbelievable. Let's go get some thoughts back uh, back in the room. Wow, crazy, everybody. Here we go, back in the studio. It's good to go on vacation, right? But it's always good to come home. So it's good to be back. And yes, for me, when I go to a new spot and I'm running and I have my camera with me, I cannot resist getting too many shots. I always overfilm, and so I'm realizing the vlog is already about five minutes long. Always want to respect your time. So instead of breaking down, yes, there it is, the Hoka Challenger ATR6 Gore-Tex in incredible detail. I'm gonna rely a little bit more so. So you know my scoring system that I use? I'm gonna be throwing the titles up on the screen a little more rapid, so pay attention to those titles for my scores, okay? Because if I go into every single detail, We'll be here for the next hour. All right, so here we go. Let's dive in. Neutral trail running shoe, five millimeter drop from heel to toe, 31 in the heel, 26 in the forefoot for that nice high stack height. For the weight, we're looking at 9.4 ounces in women's size eight or 266 grams, men's size nine, 10 and a half ounces or 297 grams. And I'm just get full disclosure, the shoe still feels a little damp. So I don't think my weight is gonna be perfectly accurate, okay? It's probably gonna, 
9.98 ounces with a little bit of moisture still in the shoe from the test up in the mountains. We're looking at a dual layer mesh, okay, with that gore uh, waterproof membrane inside. And that's the test that I did in the creek just to see how waterproof is this shoe actually doing. So real quick though, before we talk about the water, the water resistance, the lockdown, I'm really struggling. And that's why the score is so low. Uh-oh, light went out. Hold on, pause, pause. And we're back. All right, fresh battery. I think we're good to go. Okay, here we go. Where was I at? Lockdown, Hoka. Come home now. We got to work on the lot. We got to work on the shoelaces. Rarely, I mean, how often do I talk about shoelaces? These shoelaces are not working. They are, they're stiff. They're hard to, to get that nice lockdown feel to over the top of the foot. Anyway, there's my score. We got to work on it, uh, Hoka. Okay, overall score though for the upper is awesome. Very, very good. Uh, my feet did not get wet at all. Uh, up on the mountain, in the mud, in the grit, in the creek, not at all. I didn't feel any water coming in, and that is why my score is so high for the upper. We'll do a quick heel counter test. Pretty stout, but nothing. I can still bend it there a little bit. Uh, I can't even tell you how impressed I am thus far. I'll just say it with a Peg 37 shield, and now this guy uh, in the Gore-Tex version of the Hoka Challenger ATR. Six, moving on to that midsole with that compression molded EVA, okay, that classic EVA feel that Hoka has. There is my energy and ride score, okay. A uh, softer ride compared to, definitely compared, you know what, like the Torrent 2, okay. Torrent 2 midsole stack height is not as high and not, uh, not quite as um, forgiving through the foot strike. That's a good word to use. So overall score for the energy ride return is a little soft. I'm gonna, I'm, honestly, I'm gonna put it kind of in that Clifton 7 feel as far as what, you know, the actual, what the landing feels like through your gait cycle, okay? Overall though, score for the midsole, it's actually, 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 I forgot to do it. Okay, let me put this on the scale right now. This is the Challenger ATR6 with no Gore-Tex. Let's see how much this weighs. Interesting, so about a half an ounce lighter, okay, in the non-Gore-Tex version. Okay, moving on to that outsole. Um, again, today, up in the mud, four millimeter. I thought it was about three to four millimeter was my guess, and sure enough, it is four millimeter, and, um, you know, I wouldn't take this out in crazy mud. If you live in, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of, it sounds like it's really in the rainy season in Scotland and Northern England, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, po uh, pictures being posted on the Facebook group, which is listed down below if you want to join. So this is not like a high, high, um, as far as like crazy mud or running through the boggy type of conditions. Fit, true to size, comfort, okay. Um, decent score, but again, I'm, I'm not loving the lockdown comfort feel uh, over the top of the foot. And let me just remind myself, yeah, I mean, it is a gusseted, there's that membrane in there, I'm feeling the membrane. Um, it is gusseted for sure. How far down does that go? It might be fully gusseted, actually. Anyway, there's my comfort score. For my positive and drawback, of course the positive is the Gore-Tex membrane, and it's it's unbelievable. Like it's, and actually, let me pull out the insole here. I think the, or the sock liner, okay? Yes, it does have some draining capability. So if some water does get into your shoe, see those little holes there through the sock liner? Um, it, in theory, some of the water should be able to drain out of the shoe. That's, that's what Hoke is going for there with that sock liner, which other companies do that as well. So I'll keep testing over the next 50 miles to see how well that draining system works. Um, and then the drawback is the fact that the lockdown has just given me a little bit of trouble. Durability prediction, I'm gonna stick with 400 miles, which is what I gave to the Challenger ATR6 non Gore-Tex. Okay, sticking with that 400 miles and there it is in kilometers on your screen. Now, how will I use this shoe moving forward? Who's the best for? I will use this shoe when the snow is melting here in Denver and it's really sloppy out and more so for that, I'm gonna go 10 to 15 mile range. Whereas, key point here, I will opt for the EVO or the EVO Speed Goat from Hoka for those long run days and or tempo days because for long run days, I actually do prefer 
uh, the energy return that happens through that EVO Speed Goat uh, midsole. I just, it's, a, it's unbelievable. I've talked about that shoe a lot. And who is the best for? You know, high cushion. And if you live in a wet area, okay? Uh, but it is quite a bit different than the Peg 37 Shield. And we'll compare these shoes in the next week as I keep testing that shoe out as well. Price point, $139. Actually, let me put on the screen the non-Gore-Tex version versus the Gore-Tex. I believe it's $10 more for the Gore-Tex, which, you know, makes sense because you're getting an, an added bonus in that water resistance. Would I buy it again? 100%. So far, so far. Stay tuned. I mean, I was just, again, blown away at how well it did standing there in the creek. But more importantly, the actual running up on the mountain, keeping my feet nice and dry. Now, here are some other shoes on your screen that I'm testing out right now. Most of you already know this. If you saw me unbox these shoes over the past seven days, I cannot vouch for all. Actually, I can't really vouch for, I can't vouch for the Saucony Peregrine Ice Plus. Haven't tested it yet. Peg 37 Shield has my attention 100%. And last but not least, there is my final early score. Not bad, not amazing. 7.4 out of 10. Question of the day, what has been over the past two years, your best running shoe for wet conditions. And I realized like, what does that even mean? Snow, rain, like monsoon, like people watching in, you know, Thailand or where did, where it's like really monsoon conditions. I'm thinking of Thailand for some reason, like really bad rain. So what's the best shoe for really wet conditions? Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, watching. I realized I went a little long there. Onward and upward, let's stay dry this winter and I'll keep testing out these water resistant running shoes for all of you. All right, we'll toss it to the Peg 37 Shield Test. Peg 37 Shield Test from about five days ago. Right there, right there, right there. Onward and upward, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.